pressure is on you. If you mess up, the nukes will launch. Hi, everybody. Welcome to uh, my child yelling in the background. Um, <laughs> he appears to be uh, full of himself today. Oh boy, that hair is fuzzy. Fuzzy stuff. All right, so um, a pleasure as usual, folks. Uh, wow. So there have been some serious shenanigans in the group today. Y'all calm down. Um, I just got this in the mail, which is from one of our members who is apparently using her business to have a fundraiser for us, which is really sweet. Her name is Angela Leisure and L-A-I-S-U-R-E. And if you look her up on the Tastefully Simple website, she is raising money for SMYS for Change West Virginia. So yay. Thank you, girl. Um, I've been thinking about all this, uh, you know, going to speak at that conference and how crazily surreal the whole thing was and how, you know, I don't feel like quite as big an imposter anymore as I did when I started, but definitely, um, you know, definitely kind of weird. Um, trying to find where my, where this actually went because, you know, I still don't get the technologies. Well, maybe a little. Okay. So, uh, I'm on light duty for my stupid shoulder at work. I'm very lucky that I work in a place that puts you on light duty and doesn't just make you go home and take vacation or whatever. Um, but hey, still hurts. Hope it gets better. Um, wow. Essentially, I'm still so completely bowled over by that entire experience in Boston. I just can't even tell you guys. I have a couple of things that are probably going to happen um, in the next few weeks that you guys are going to want to get involved with. First one, most important, the patient safety walks. Guys, you need to get involved with the patient safety walks. Um, it, I cannot even describe to you exactly how important this is for our organization. This is how we are going to, you know, pay for all the rest of the junk you want to do. Um, I threw the link into chat just now. Um, you need to make your own page and fundraise. That's all we're asking you to do. It's like jump rope for heart when you were a kid, but it's virtual. You just have to share it with everybody you know, and that's that. So, as long as we do well enough, our plans are if you raise 50 bucks, you get a t-shirt. If you raise 100 bucks, you get a t-shirt and a water bottle. And, of course, it will be the most gorgeous Show Me Your Stethoscope swag, as usual. PJ, you know, prides herself on the pretty designs that she puts out. And, I mean, I'm always bowled over by them. You know that. She's just, it's like super it's like having my own little toy designer she just does it and then I just get to pretend like it's all mine 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 it's awesome um, a lot of stuff going on in the country for nursing right now uh, Minnesota the strike strike at the Brigham so lots of work for strike nurses also a strike at a community hospital in California where um, the state is not really enforcing the ratio law and the hospital is taking advantage of it. So we have that going on. Um, if you live in California and you work in a hospital that is not, you know, not doing what they're supposed to do, um, my suggestion to you is that you freaking make them. I mean, do you know how hard it was to get that law passed? Um, you just need to make sure that you enforce it. I mean, for God's sakes, don't let them get away with it. It's crazy. 
Um, or I think it's crazy, I guess. It's crazy if I say so, darn it, because it's me and stuff. Um, yeah. So, had a couple of um, conversations with folks that were um, at the hackathon, and they're all really super excited about it. Um, lots of people did just some great stuff there. I mean, you guys would kick everybody's butt. Everybody's. Um, so, walk for patient safety, one. Then two, get in your darn change group, kids, and put, you know, put yourself to work for the uh, walk that is going to be in your local area, the walk in your state. This is important. Um, and, you know, your employer can't say too much about a walk for patient safety. If we were going to say a walk for staffing ratios or, or anything like that, that would be one thing. But that's not what this is. This is very specifically a walk for making patients safer in healthcare settings, whatever that healthcare setting may be. Um, it is a separate thing from the rally, though it will lead up to the rally. Um, and, you know, we, we need you to get involved. This is something that you have to do, guys. It's, it's important, super important. Here's some Minnesota nurses, guys, or excuse me, Massachusetts nurses right here. Pictures in the comments. Um, you just need to, hold on a minute, share on a page you manage. I'm already on that page. How about share in a group? There we go. Okay, I'm going to shave, shave. Sorry, TIA. Um, I'm going to share that in a group. Well, yes, of course we're focused on ratios, but I don't want anybody to worry about getting in trouble about going to a patient safety walk. I keep hearing this over and over again about, you know, worrying about getting in trouble. Let me tell you something, man. The only trouble I am worried about getting in is the trouble with my license. Um, an employer is never going to cover you. You know, they're not going to cover your license. If they can blame it on you and not them, well, that's what's going to happen. I mean, come on. HR departments do not have souls. The people working in them might have souls, but, you know, human resources as a rule is not there to protect you. They're there to protect the company. Um, so you shouldn't worry about getting in trouble about this. This is not, not something to worry about. Um, you know, it just occurred to me that my face may look no, that's not why my face looks red. My face is just damn red. What did I do? Hmm. I'm looking around like there are any more red lights in here. No, nope, just red. Okay. So, um, <laughs> God. All right. Um, so we're watching all these nurses in all these places, you know, fighting for the things they need. And I am personally very inspired. Hi, Anne. I am personally very inspired about these, you know, these nurses doing these things. Um, and I'm also, I, I feel kind of bad for them because they are working so hard to protect their patients and their companies just are not so, just settling it out with them. And they're putting the patients in danger by bringing nurses in who are not, you know, who do not work in that environment. As I always say, where we hide the gauze pads and the defibrillator. These people don't know where we hide the stuff. If you've got like one or two agency nurses, that's great. When the entire hospital turns agency, you don't know where anything is, you know? I mean, even the most commonly built out electronic health record is going to have, you know, a couple of hospital-specific differences. You can have documentation issues. 
This is a big deal. Um, patient care will suffer. It's going to suffer. And why do we let this happen as individual little units all over the country instead of just all getting up together and going, we're done with this. Why, why are we doing this? You know, I, I mean, we are this huge profession and all this division, we need to see some unity. And I'm hoping that's why you guys come to show me your stethoscope for unity, because that's why I'm here. And I, don't know, I really hope that we can get a little tighter together here, folks, and show them who's boss, because you're boss. They cannot pick up people on the side of the road to come in and do your job. Done. Um, yeah, those Minnesota nurses and the Massachusetts nurses and the California ones, and, you know, it's all over the place. Three strikes in a week. That's, that's a pretty powerful statement. You know what that statement is? It's things are not going right. Things are going so wrong that nurses are walking out the door and saying, we are going to strike because it's not safe to take care of these patients in the current environment. There you go. Three at a time, yep. Sure does, Ann. Um, just a lot of... That's a lot of strength. It's just not healthy. Our profession is not healthy when that's happening, and we need to give it a shot in the arm, as it were. And don't aspirate. That is the new rule. You do not aspirate. Stop fighting about it on the page. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. So, um, Eco Stethoscopes is giving away a stethoscope. It is a, as they said, J.D. Harvey Garner approved Eco Stethoscope. I used it, and probably don't know, of course, because almost nobody knows that I have a very mild heart murmur. And uh, Jen Lombardi's story was actually able to hear the heart murmur with the eco stethoscope that nobody else really can hear. I mean, they have to get me on my side, you know, you know, per certain position to be able to hear this murmur and Jen could hear it without it. So that's, I mean, that seems like superior diagnostic power. Um, oh, like I always do when we're, uh, I have to tell you that, hi Paige, hi Naomi. Oh, love you guys too. Um, Eco stethoscopes, because I'm saying how good they are, I also need to tell you that they're sponsoring the trip to Haiti. Um, they're and they're sending not the whole trip, obviously, but part of it. And they're um, sending an eco to Haiti so we can use it in diagnostics. So that's cool. I just like to tell you guys what kind of a stake any advertisers have with us when I'm, you know, saying that their product's awesome. Um, but their product is awesome. That's, you know, it's not awesome because I, uh, you know, because they're sponsoring this, this trip. It's awesome because it's freaking awesome. And you can try it for yourself. I wish more of you had come to the hackathon. Here, there's me with the stethoscope. Um, I wish more of you had come to the hackathon because you would have been able to see it. Um, it's like, well, hear it more like, and there are also on it, there are like training sounds like, you know, pericardial rub and whatever else. So it's cool. I mean, I would, I think I'm going to buy one. Honestly, that's not mine. The one I just put up there is, is not mine, but, um, it's, it's a pretty cool, uh, it's a pretty cool gadget and it's HIPAA compliant. And if you don't understand what sound you're hearing, you can totally just send it to, you know, somebody else and maybe they can figure it out for you. And also it can be saved to an EHR. So you can actually save stuff in the health record. If the, of course that particular EHR is equipped for that sort of thing. I think this is like the future. <laughs> and of course, show me your stethoscope, always interested in stethoscopes. And the way that the eco works is that you can, um, 
you can put like your you know if you have your old favorite you know bright green stethoscope and you want to use that one but you want to use the eco functionality well it'll go on your stethoscope you know say you can use your bell your junk and then this will just fit between the tubing and the bell and I, it's less expensive when you do it that way to I don't know how much because you know I'm terrible at this but let me real quick go to their website I want to say that the whole model is $299 and then if you get it without it it's $199 eco stethoscope all right yeah so the whole thing with a um, with the eco stethoscope on it which I mean it felt like a good quality stethoscope to me you know after you've handled enough of them but um, yeah okay yeah 299 for that and if you just want to add it to your existing stethoscope it's 199 so Paige Brady oh my goodness when are we going to lunch you live like right around the corner for God's sakes okay so what else do you what do you guys want to talk about today I'm going to go on about eco stethoscopes and all that other junk because I don't know I like it it's cool you know um, what do you want to talk about you need donations for those stethoscopes to go over on mission are they donating them no 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 they're um, they are actually they're sending those stethoscopes to Haiti we don't we don't have to pay anything for them not at all we don't need any money um, Holly, my shoulder hurts. It hurts a lot. I'm still on light duty, um, which means I'm about that. No patience at the tips of my fingers. I don't like that, okay? Not cool. I like patient care. So, um, I'm scheduling people, and of course, scheduling people, you know, getting them on the phone and educating them and stuff, that's a kind of patient care. Um, just kind of out my kind of patient care. I like to be, you know, elbows deep in blood if I can, you know, manage it. So, um, maybe, maybe I just need to change specialties. No, probably not. Oh yeah. Thanks, Holly. Walk for patient safety in Salt Lake City, Utah, September 3rd and Asbury Park, New Jersey on September 17th. So those are two new dates. Um, make sure you check out the walk for patient safety website walk the number four patient safety website dot com, you know, not without website dot com and also um i think i just gave you guys the link for the walk for patient safety event um oh i bet it will connie won't it it's gonna blow their minds i mean awesome and I'm so glad that we're able to bring that technology to that country. I mean, how awesome is that? When you have somebody, or not somebody, but a country that's not really super technologically advanced, and you're able to bring them ugh, better technology, really good technology. I mean, that's cool. I really like being a part of that, and I'm so proud of you guys for being a part of it. You know, because you are. You're a huge part of it. Links on the Walk for Patient Safety Facebook page. Thank you, Holly. Um, I mean, we can totally just... Do you have any idea how many people we're going to impact this year? I mean, we've already impacted a whole lot of people. But you are going to be impacting so many people. I can't even believe it. <laughs> I mean, with the things that we have done... Yeah, I am proud, Paige. I, I am super proud it's I'm proud of you guys for doing all these things and participating in all these things and I just can't I just can't help it I can't help being proud of you so um, are you guys thinking about our mini conference that we're talking about doing in DC oh look who that is that's Ian Garner kiss you mommy that was not a kiss. That was a drive-by. Get over here. Thank you. Yes, he is that pretty. Um, 
Oh, my husband is calling. Shall we answer? And you're on the live stream with Janie. Oh, that's awesome. Here, tell dad what you want for dinner. Go that way. Okay, so he said go back to your live stream. My battery is dead. Apparently my husband has to go buy a battery for the car. Um, so, yeah, not cool. Apparently I had to get a jump from somebody at work. It's a new car. He's got a purple car. Oh, uh, let's see. You know, I don't know how bad the ratios are getting for those hospitals. Does anyone know? Does anyone know what else has happened? I know that um, Massachusetts also had money and benefits issues. That, you know, safe staffing wasn't their only problem. Um, Minnesota, I believe, you know, those are both, um, actually all three of those are, at least two of them are NNU hospitals. I'm not sure if um, the third one is. Oh. I'm not a great leader, Holly. You guys are just a great army. Um, yeah, I know he's cute, Paige. He's super pretty, actually. I mean, super pretty. Do you know what he did earlier? He was, um, he actually got on this dirt bike. He's got like a Kawasaki dirt bike and he's always in a helmet and, you know, running around on his motorcycle. And, um, he actually drove to right outside that window and was revving up because he thought I was live streaming. Oh, please, Naomi. You know I love you. Um, Kathy, apparently, the, um, California hospital, um, the hospital was not enforcing the ratios and apparently the state was not enforcing the law. That's what I hear. I'm sure we could get more information on that. I, I've been talking. Oh, what the heck with the yawning? I've been talking to a couple of people who, um, who live out that way. And apparently in some parts of California. Oh, is that my phone? Thank you, son. Child. Good thing he's pretty. Um. that's a challenge that we have people present to us about ratios. And, and that is true. Thank you, Kislu. We have to do another fundraiser soon for you. About time to feed some kids. Um, didn't you say you were going to send me prices of like some instruments you needed for your clinic, Kislu? You need to do that. Um, yeah, Christine Fry always, always knows the scoop on California, but yeah, apparently, ooh, if uh, if you guys, like, out in Cali, let anybody, you know, buy with, um, with not enforcing the ratios once, they, you know, you give them a, a um, what, an inch, they take a mile. Are you serious, dude? I'm streaming. I don't do that to you when you're streaming. Yes, you do. You know, this house is a zoo. It is a zoo. Here, make me a cup of coffee with cream. That is your punishment. I need caffeine right now. Make me a $20 bill with change. There we go. So he's punished. Yes, send me an email, Kislu, or drop it my in my inbox so we can do that. Um, the um, stuff like blood pressure cuffs and uh, thermometers and different instruments that they use in the clinic. Oh. See, this is why I need the coffee. Um, apparently, Kislu said a lot of them were wearing out, and he can actually buy that stuff way cheaper over there than we could, like, buy it here and send it. So we'll just work with him on getting them re restocked with the clinics with their instruments because we have to make sure they can deliver quality patient care wherever. And that's part of, you know, what we're looking at with these strikes. If, if we make it impossible for people who are, you know, trying to deliver quality patient care by understaffing them desperately, giving them no equipment, all these things that, you know, we certainly need to fight about it. Yes, Sonny? It says auto offset. Yes, 
click the button on the back of the of the Keurig, Sunny. To do everything around here. No, there is not currently a fundraiser Kiss Loose project, Holly, but you know, I mean if any if the nebulizer's told any story, when he gets it to me we'll do it. You know. I think it was under an hour last time. Um so you you know if you've already got ratios enforce them the rest other 49 states please make sure that you uh you know get these other things you know get all this going walks for patient safety become involved in your change group network get to the rally next year all these things I'm always wondering when staffing is really bad and something goes wrong with the patient, does a fault still lie entirely on the nurse? That scares me. Yes, it does. That's why your nursing instructors told you to not take an unsafe assignment in nursing school, because they knew what was going to happen to you. They knew it. Yes, California is the only state with mandated ratios, Laura. Um, you should see if anyone is interested in doing a research evaluation on nurse ratios across the nation in a large research experiment. You know, we could do that, Paige, except for there's only nurse there's only nurse ratios in California, and um, none of the other states want us to get used to having you know an appropriate amount of help. <laughs> there's a lot of uh, research on the California ratios as opposed to the rest of the U.S. Um, but yeah, you're, yes, if you take 10 patients on med surge and, you know, you fail to rescue a patient or you don't do something you're supposed to, or you do something you're not supposed to do, any of the big three crappy things that can happen, yes, it's your fault. That's why I don't take unsafe assignments. They can just fire me. I'm good with that. Because you know what they can't give me back? My license. The Board of Nursing has to do that. Oh, Christine arrives! Yay! Um, Christine knows a whole lot about the ratio thing. She lives in California and she does stuff with NMU. Um, training question semicolon. What about work efficiency? You're voice texting, aren't you? Between mandated ratios versus not mandated ratios. Um, you know what? We could probably ask Christine that. Yeah, I could tell you were texting to speech because that was an awesome text to speech fail. Mine is usually saying something about murder or sex or something, and then I'll send it by accident, and then the entire admin team like gets hysterical laughing. Um, so, oh, that's okay, Christine. This is totally random. You know me. I just decide I'm going to live stream, and then, oh, there we are. We're live streaming. Um, you know, got to talk to my peeps every now and then haven't streamed since Boston, so, you know, I'm already behind. So, it's the only state with ratios. The other states that have any kind of control over staffing have staffing committees. And let me see. One of them is Texas, and one of them is Ohio. You are such a nice little boy. Give me a kiss. I need another kiss. They all think you're cute when you kiss me. Wow, Mom, you're just doing it for the money and the views. Wow. Right here. That's not, that's a head bunk. Thank you. All right. So, um, oh, me, t okay. So I had to change Jaleel's name to J L E E L. They all said, kiss your mama. Um, because it wouldn't dial him, even if I said Jaleel. Oh, Google Hangout? I could do that, Paigey. Let's see. Well, I like to feel connected to everyone. That's right. You need to kiss his mama. Staffing committees get to divide out hours between staff, but don't decide the hours. Yeah, the staffing committees thing, apparently, um, where these state laws have been passed, um, these nurses have told me they are completely and utterly useless. Um, because essentially it's, oh, well, you have to let the nurses have a say in staffing, but then they countermand you and say, nope, we're going to do it this way. So, 
Oh, yeah, huge disparity. Florida is awful. Florida is probably the worst. I'm looking to do a research project in the states that have staffing plans, develop literature to show that the staffing plans are not effective, as I see on the travel boards from nursing, nurses discussing their horrible ratios that still occur in those states. Yeah, and I've heard that, I don't know if you've heard Texas is especially bad, Kathy, but I've heard Texas and Ohio are especially bad as well. Is there a middleman whenever you have to make those decisions? No, honey, there's no middleman. What it is is that they pretend you have a say, you know, and then you really don't. <laughs> hey, thanks, Alex. Um, I mean, we already have this meeting, this meeting they want you to have, these staffing committees. Um, we call it the morning staff meeting in every hospital, and then the afternoon one, and then the night one, okay? It's, uh, we already have a staffing meeting. This was just fluff to put in as an alternative to ratios. What, what they like to say is that nurses need more flexibility and need to have more say in the process of staffing. So ratios are too rigid. No. See, because we set it at a safe ratio and then we adjust downward for acuity. So if you've got four to one, but one of your patients is too sick for that, you go to three to one. Not, oh, we can give you whatever the hell you want, you know, we want to give you so we can cut costs, but you're gonna need to take five patients instead of the four that are safe, or three patients instead of the two that are safe. Um, so that's the difference between staffing committees and um, nurse to patient ratios. Essentially, staffing committees, there's a committee at the hospital that staffs us, yes, that's every day. Um, but they don't have to work the floor, and even if they bring a nurse in there that does work the floor, I mean, her opinion doesn't count, or his opinion. When I say her opinion, I use her in nursing like we use he in literature or him, you know, because it's just the usual. It's not that I'm counting out my lovely, lovely male nurses. Know it. See, I find it funny. Whenever we have to have decisions made in a durable medical field, but this is specifically my field, we have people from the outside of our field dictate what they deem is right or not all right for, for us for billing. We find it unfair that someone outside of our field decides on what's okay for us, but it can be completely opposite what is good for the, and I'm assuming you mean patient. Um, yeah, well, in our case, they can't even bill for us, girl. I mean, we are a line item. We come with the room. We are an inanimate object. Have some of that. Um, what happens with us is that basically someone who is outside of our field, meaning they used to be at the bedside or they were never at the bedside, um, makes decisions about staffing in a reactionary manner instead of a proactive manner, you know, by retaining nurses and hiring enough staff and getting agency coverage. Instead, they just plug the holes like the little boy with his thumb in the dike, okay? And patients suffer. That's how we do it. That's how we do it downtown in nursing. Want to change it? Kathy, right there, Kathy Stokes. She's the chairman of our rally for this year and she wants you to become involved, and so do I, and so do your patients. Watsonville, California is on strike because the hospital claims they cannot find enough staff to fill ratios. I know some unemployed nurses. Who doesn't know any unemployed nurses? Yeah. Patients over profits, executives with no health care background make staffing decisions, which is all about the hospital's bottom line. Yeah. True. I would love for the people who are involved with the legalities to pull all of their job applications to see why they didn't hire all the people that applied. Because I'm going to bet you, I will bet you $100 toward Kiss Loose Fund. I'll give it, my personal self, that this is all based on the hospital not hiring enough people to save money, and then crying this, crying poverty, poverty of staff. 
so silly. Oh, great. One of the patient safety walks is going to be in Watsonville, California. So if you are a Californian, you should definitely take part in that. Patricia Ann, tell me a little bit more about that, please. How did you like to threaten your license? Um, heck, I gotta tell you guys, from what I've heard about California, I've, I've deeply considered invading Christine's, Christine Fry's house like four days a month and going to work, you know, as a staff nurse four days a month in California. I don't know exactly. Tell, give me an example, Patricia Ann. Yeah, I've, I've thought about, you know, just crashing on Christine's couch for a few days and, you know, a few days a month and just doing it. Making my money. Oh, Christine's having a hard time staying connected, so we won't expect too much out of her right now. If it weren't for my dogs, I would totally go work there and fly back. Yeah, I got you, sister. I mean... And the thing is, is that working agency in California, you don't make a lot of money. you got to get an actual job there at the hospital because you make more money as a staff nurse in California than you do as an agency nurse. How's that? Can you imagine? I know what I've been paid for agency. My last shift, I had two patients in ICU, and I was actually able... We'll get the rest of that comment from Trisha in a minute. Yep, per diem. Exactly, Kathy. Oh, you were able to provide quality care? Girl, that is awesome. Do you know how much I like to hear that? 77 nights. Good God. Does anybody want to know what I make an hour? Do you want to know? $34. Yeah. So, having said that, my mortgage is a lot less than Christine's, but, you know, still. They make, they make a lot of money, but that, that's not the important thing. The important thing is that they are able to provide quality care to their patients every single day. What would you give for that? I know what I would give for that. God. I mean, people that you're able to actually sit and talk with, like they want. I was provided, I provide to help this lady, has, I don't know if I do quality care or not. But I, that's real, you are a mess, Paigey, if you text to speak, oh God. Oh, Holly, you know what, you get a great pension. Um... You get a great pension, but you do not, I mean, my health insurance costs just as much or more than everyone else's, okay? I mean, it's, it used to be really good, but when the Affordable Care Act was, you know, they were ramping up to the Affordable Care Act, um, the government raised the, uh, the premiums, or the insurance companies raised the government's premiums, 50 percent in one year. So I hope at least somebody got medical care that, that didn't before. I really do because I got to tell you that's pretty expensive. Yeah, I know insurance companies. Uh, well, you know, Holly, I will say and I I got to tell everybody before I say this, I'm not a fan of the Affordable Care Act and I might be biased, okay? I just don't like the way it was put in place. But the states not taking the Medicare, excuse me, the Medicaid expansion completely destroyed it because a whole bunch of people that would have been eligible for Medicaid weren't. I totally get why the states that did it, what, what their reasoning was, but frankly it was crippled from the moment it got off the ground. I'm still not a fan, but... That was not how the Affordable Care Act was supposed to work. Um, it, I, I'm not a fan, but I'm trying to be reasonable, and it's it's not cool. So I have to make a Google Hangout, huh? Does that mean everybody gets to talk back to me? Oh, I bet, you know, KG is an orthodist. Tell me if I did that wrong. Um... 
she makes different like prostheses. She fits them. Prostheses? Tell me how the tense is there, Paige. Um, so she has a really cool job. I, I think she's the only... No, don't say close enough. All right, fine. Close enough. Um, braces. Okay, braces. Great. Um, she may be a one of a kind in Show Me Your Stethoscope, cause, or at least she's the only one that hangs out and talks. Um, she also lives in St. Louis and won't come over. She won't come over. Um, but she does all kinds of neat stuff. The only thing I feel bad about her about is that she has to touch feet, like, all the time. And anybody who knows me knows that's actually my kryptonite. I cannot stand feet. Blah! Feet. Um, so. Is who scared of me? Paige? No, she knows better. Um. Are you coming to my pig roast, Paige? Are you coming? I have a pig roast every year, and, oh my God, your daughter's moving from New York City to, from Florida, so she get insurance? God, that is awful. I'm scrolling back here. Oh, she threatens you guys about pre-pouring meds that you'll lose your license. Is there bacon? There's a hundred freaking pounds of it. Are you serious? There's always a hundred people, always a hundred pounds. Um... You know, I I know that there are certain ways we should do things in long-term care, but I, you know, these people have it hard. Passing meds on 60 patients at once and trying to get all their meds within that, you know, time period, 60 people. And you're talking about people with dementia and people who are frail. And people who maybe can't like swallow their meds and they have to crush them and put them in pudding and all kinds of crazy stuff and and they have 60 of them and they're pre-passing and somebody's worried about like I don't know pre-pouring 30 things of milk and magnesia because you know you're gonna give 30 of them I mean it's a whole bunch of milk and magnesia you know I mean it's not potassium okay it's not IV potassium Sometimes we have to do things that we, you know, that we would prefer to do another way because the staffing is so bad. So let's threaten some people's licenses. How awful is that? You know, I, I worked in long-term care. I did it PRN because I really, really liked the little old people. And I'm going to tell you, that was frightening for me. It was so scary. I don't know how you guys do it every day to do it. I don't, I don't know how you do it. Um, I, I just, I don't get it. I mean, you got one little guy that you might take 10 minutes giving his meds, and you know you're going to take 10 minutes, you know, or you've got G-tubes, or you've got, you know, you've got treatments that you're doing during the med pass. Oh, let me put this cream on this behind. No, you're not going to put this cream on this behind. You're going to wait until it's time for the patient to have his brief changed, and then there's going to be cream for the behind. Oh, and you're probably not going to do it. I'll say no more about that. Um... Let me tell you, wasn't for good CNAs, long-term care couldn't even exist. I mean, we would just have to, I don't know, everyone would have to take care of their own grandmother at home. Because if there were no CNAs, there would be no health care. Tracy is planning a walk, West Palm Beach, Florida on November 12th. If you're a Floridian, you need to help with that, uh, that walk in West Palm Beach, Florida. I think... When you're talking about West Palm Beach in November, I think maybe that's a walk I want to go to. What do you think? Think I should be able to go to that? Maybe that would be one of the walks I show up at. <coughs> Poor Christine. I'm afraid to say something because every time I do, I get disconnected. How are the number one threat to the patient's is unsafe staffing. I know that people are terrified to say no and that nurses learn to do their best. But all that being said, we must all stand up for each other and our patients. I know everyone here knows that, but it needs to be like a virus that we spread to everyone around us. 
boy. That's true. Pretty profound there, Christine. Thank you. Oh, yeah, you know what, Anne? You can't sue nursing homes into acting right. We're going to have to legislate them into acting right. And as I always say, I know everybody wants that to be a national thing. But long-term care is ultimately, I think, going to be regulated on a state level. Um, I know nobody likes to hear that, but I'm pretty sure that that's the way it's going to happen. Um, I know sometimes when we say hospital, 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 that nurses who work in long-term care feel like we're leaving them out. Believe me, you are always at the forefront of my mind, for God's sakes. I mean, I just, I don't even know how you do it. You know, I think Jaleel used to do long-term care. Um, it, I don't, I just don't know how anybody does it. For God's sakes. It's just so hard. I know Jen's story, like, did it for like 15 minutes and quit. She was like, oh, hell no, I can't do this. Because that is not faint of heart. I mean, 60 patients. Oh, and you want to hear a good one? I usually worked on this floor called 500 when I was there, right? So I worked, I, I worked on this, you know, it's called the 500 unit and there were 60 patients on it. They're usually two nurses and like six CNAs, right? So state was in the building. They gave me a completely different unit that I'd never been on before four CNAs and no med tech. I said, nope, not doing it. Refuse the assignment. The ADON comes down. You can't refuse your assignment. I was like, um, but I can, I just did. I'm not taking a report. So I'll see ya. Oh, and then all of a sudden I got, you know, some staff and whatever. They dug somebody up, but I just won't do it. State was in the building at the time, by the way. Uh, one CNA to 42 patients. Yeah, Jen is a smart cookie. You did it for eight years, Naomi? Oh my God. There's just no way. I couldn't. I, I loved those little people. I mean, I loved them. I used to play games with the, you know how you have all the folks, you know, stacked up around the nurse's station in their wheelchairs because they can't really be left alone. And, you know, you're not supposed to put a bed al Did, Have you guys heard this nonsense about a bed alarm being a restraint? Have you heard that? You know, a chair alarm or a bed alarm being a restraint and that they have the right to fall? I mean, who came up with that? Somebody who wants all the old people to get some dural hematomas and die? Who came up with that? I met an RN at the DC rally who wants to run for political office. Let's back her. Just have to find her. Can't remember her name. Yes, the right to fall, and I mean, who has ever heard of such a thing? I mean, we put their beds on the floor. Unbelievable. Yeah, it, and it is true, Naomi. I mean, it is true. It's I, our old people and our, you know, profoundly disabled folks that are in these care homes, they need to be protected. Yeah, that's what I say, Lane. An alarm is not a restraint. But it has, in certain facilities in the state of Missouri, been interpreted as a restraint, if you want to believe that. It is a restraint. It is a restraint. No, it's an alarm. It's not a restraint. I don't even know what I'm saying. I think that was a TIA. Um, yes, it is going to be us one day. You know? Oh, you don't want to be a Pez dispenser. Yeah, I know, Lori. <laughs> You're willing to forego your right to fall. Me too. Okay, so has anybody ever, um, I mean, ever heard that though about the right to fall? No, I doubt it's a restraint at BJC page. I mean, or it wasn't the last time I worked at BJC. But having said that, I mean, that right to fall stuff and the no chair alarm thing came uh, not so, you know, came out not too long ago. Right to fall, then call 911 for the resulting injuries. Yes, Lane, because we want to see you. 
We missed you a lot. We missed you so much. So we're going to let this poor, poor lady fall who is somebody's grandma. She's going to crack her skull. She's going to lack her head. And we're going to send them with you. And guess what? They're going to be completely confused and terrified. And there's blood everywhere. And all we had to do was put a damn alarm underneath them. Or, I don't know, get funding for sitters for these poor people. I don't know. You know, we have all kinds of different long-term care facilities. There are long-term care facilities for children, you know, and I know those are better staffed simply because those children have parents and wouldn't put up with that. Um, right to a fractured hip. Yes, you're right there, Anne. Can I have the right to fall into a pool and enjoy being put in? If you do not allow me, I'll have a tantrum. Okay, well, I have a pool. So if you come to the pig roast, you can come swimming. Other than that, I can't help you. So, I don't know, guys. I, I really just, I, I think that that is just a load of crap, that whole thing with the right to fall. Yeah, and the family has a right to sue for injury. You're right, Naomi. You know, I had a, when I was doing this long-term care thing, we had this poor woman who was convinced that we were starving her mother. She wouldn't let them put a G-tube in. The lady was aspirating all the time. Uh, the pork fest is on July 30th. Um, but she was, you know, she had a stroke. She had a bad stroke, but she was kind of, contracted over a little bit and she was aspirating everything that put, was put in her mouth and they wanted to put it in a g-tube and daughter wouldn't let them and and then she aspirated a lot because the daughter would push her head back up she was contracted and it was obviously very painful for the lady and she would just shove food in her mouth and she'd continually aspirate well it wasn't a giant surprise when she got aspiration pneumonia and died and of course they blamed us and complained to the state and i'm like really Really? For real? Oh, so, okay, I don't know if you guys know this, um, but, well, real quick, Lori and developmental disability are individuals have a right to self-injurious behavior, but not a right to be DNR. Okay, well, that's disgusting. Um, Fox special on medical errors is going to be on on Saturday, which is the 25th at 8 p.m. Eastern. And were you on it, Christine? I'm on it. I'm on this special. I went to, um, a couple of weeks ago, I went and filmed, you know, and, and they filmed my interview with them. Um, it, it was, it was an interesting experience. Um, Oh, me and Christopher. Christopher is a patient advocate um, who unfortunately lost, I want to say it was his daughter, please tell me if I'm incorrect, um, to a medical error. Um, which, I mean, I know what losing a child is, and losing a child to somebody's medical error sounds pretty bad. Um, but we know what happens, you know? I mean, look at poor Kim Hyatt. I mean, you know, 10 times too much calcium to a PICU patient, and of course she was pretty debilitated. They don't know that that's what killed the kid, but either way, it didn't matter. You know, she got fired, blackballed, and she suicided. Um. <coughs> okay. Taped interviewing me, but may or may not make it in. Emily relieved. Oh my, yeah, uh, received chemo mixed with hypersol, hypersal, that's right. Um, yeah, she, she received like 3% with chemo. So, I mean, you don't recover from that, unfortunately. Um, but Chris is apparently a really good patient advocate, and um, he's going to be involved with some of our walks for patient safety. He's going to be our liaison to the um to the advocacy community because whether we like it or not a lot of medical errors have happened a lot of people have died and they're out there um so i'll be glad to get to know them 
All right, guys, this has been a the Emily Jerry Foundation. Thank you, Christine. So that's who Chris is. He's the M Emily Jerry Foundation. Um, okay, guys, so this has been a pretty long live stream, and I'm sure I'm boring you by now. So Chris is welcome to come to Florida. I'm telling you guys, that's warm. Like November, Florida, West Palm Beach, that's warm. I might have to definitely go to that walk. Oh, and people like living in Minnesota, you better have yours in like spring because I am not going anywhere in the snow. Uh, oh yeah, Minnesota in the winter. You can keep that one, Anne. Um, yes, I will ice my shoulder. I'm going to go take some ibuprofen. Um, and I really enjoyed talking to you guys. Um, you know, another live stream next couple of days. And remember, Eco... The Eco Stethoscope that they're sending to Haiti, that is super awesome, and I'm really appreciative of them doing that. And story could find my heart murmur, so it must be pretty good. All right, you guys don't do anything bad, and uh, I'll see you soon, okay?